a very, very nice lens and feeling in all respects like a premium product. Well, hey everybody, thank you once again for checking in and this week I've been shooting a very interesting lens sent to me very kindly by TT Artisan. I'll just take the lens cap off. This is the TT Artisan 10mm f2 for APS-C lenses, uh, cameras rather, and I've been shooting this on my Fujifilm X-T3 and I've been having lots and lots of fun with it. We're now with a 10 millimeter lens. It's got a full frame equivalent of 15 millimeters. So this is a very, very wide lens. So we're now really into the territory of the super wide lens. And it's not often that I've shot lenses that are this wide. And usually, you know, if you watch this show, usually you'll know that usually I, I prefer lenses with a little bit longer reach, maybe 75, 80, 90, 100, that sort of focal length. So this is a very, very wide lens for me to use. And I did have to moderate my technique a little bit um, in order to use it and to get the best out of it. But once I would got used to it, my gosh, I had loads of fun with this lens. This is a real fun lens that you can get some really interesting images with it. One technique that I did find that is quite useful, or that I found quite useful, was to have more than one center of image, uh, center of attention rather, center of interest in the image. So I might have one uh, center of interest in a corner while all around there are lots of other things going on which also draw your eye. You have to be careful not to do a confused shot that way but that is one technique that I found rather effective. So we'll uh, before we go on before I yank any further about this lens let's have a little look at it in close-up. So there is our TT Artisan 10 millimeter f2 lens and that really is quite a wide aperture opening for such uh, a wide lens you can see it's got this conical uh, appearance that uh, quite a few tt artisans lenses have it does have a screw-on lens cap this is quite a large one uh, but again, this is a TT Artisan feature. You often find that they have screw-on lens caps. However, these are not my favourites, actually, the screw-on lens caps. But this one does have a little trick up its sleeve in that if you remove this hood, there is supplied in the box a plastic push-on lens cap. That you can just push on there for greater speed you can just pull it off quickly push it on quickly you don't get the benefit of the hood of course um, but you don't always need that and i think that's a really good addition and i'm very very pleased to see that because it really does speed up the use of the lens the focus ring is at the front on this lens and the aperture ring is towards the rear. The clicks are very, very delicate. There are half stops in between each click. Let me just make sure we're focused properly. So there are half stops in between each click, which is nice. And there's quite a distance between each of those half stops so you can get very fine aperture adjustment on this lens. Everything turns very nicely and smoothly. The focus ring is very easy to find with the camera to your eye and that also moves with a very fluid, beautiful, damped action. 
the actual movement of the focus ring is small. It's not even 180 degrees. It's about a third of a turn. I don't know if you can see that there, but it really isn't a great deal at all. So that's pretty handy. You don't need to do a lot of focusing with this lens because it has such inherent large depth of field. But nevertheless, when you do need to focus, it's pretty quick to do so. So a very nicely made lens. Let's just pop it off the camera and have a look at the rear. Just because we can, there is the rear of the lens and you can see that everything is nicely made of metal. I don't think there's any plastic at all used in this lens or at least if there is, it certainly isn't easy to detect. So a very, very nice lens and feeling in all respects like a premium product. So a very nicely made lens with generally a feeling of very high quality, but how does it shoot? Well, actually it shoots really nicely. Let's think about color to begin with. Well, the colors from this lens are very punchy. They're very strong. They're very vibrant. They're very pumped up and there is a lot of saturation with them. It will flare if you catch sunlight at the wrong angle, if a, a, a stray uh, reflection from the sun hits this big front element there at the wrong angle, and it is a fairly large exposed front element. So that's not difficult to happen. But when that does happen, I mean, obviously, if you're shooting straight into the sun, that's going to wash things out completely. But if you just catch a ray just obliquely, it can just the wash the contrast down just a little bit and give you some beautiful flares as well. So it will make some very, very nice images in that regard. Also where the sunlight is just playing with the lens, playing with the coatings and really making something quite beautiful. So that for me, that is a bonus for what this lens can do. It's a very, very sharp lens, even from wide open at f2. And during all the time I used it, I didn't find any need to stop it down at all. It does get sharper if you stop it down as any lens will, but this is most certainly sharp enough to shoot wide open all day and you will never ever notice any softness in your images. Now that is an inherent factor of wide lenses. They do tend to be rather sharp, but nevertheless, that said, my gosh, this one's so sharp, you really can shoot it wide open all day long at f2 and not notice any softness at all. There is no chromatic aberration at all that I can see from this lens, certainly that I've been able to detect in my tests. I've photographed some trees against the sky, some very stark trees devoid of leaves against the sky, and I look very, very hard. That's a typical place where you would see chromatic aber aberration, which, if you're not sure what it is, is where you just get a little bit of separation of purple at one side and green at the other side of, for example, uh, a bare tree branch shot against the sky. Well, now, however hard I looked, I just couldn't see any from this lens at all. So an extremely good technical performance as far as chromatic aberration goes. Um, and a very impressive performance to see. Background blur, well, this is a super wide lens and although it's f2, in the ordinary way of things, you're not going to see much blur. You know, you can shoot uh, an image, you can shoot a subject at up to a metre away and 
you know, even at that fairly close distance, you're just not going to see any discernible blur. There may be some there if you pixel peep, there may be a little bit of separation, but just looking at the images with the naked eye, you're not going to see any separation. This is a lens that gives very deep depth of field in almost all shooting conditions. However, it does have a little party trick up its sleeve because the minimum focus distance of this lens is a mere 25 centimeters. Now that is very close indeed. It's almost as close as my old Carl's ICA in a Flectagon goes to at 19 centimeters. This one has a minimum focus distance of 25 centimeters and combined with the fairly wide, fairly fast opening of f2, maximum opening of f2, well, that will give you a little bit of blur if you stay right at that minimum focus distance of 25 centimeters or thereabouts. It will give you some nice blur and some nice separation and you can indeed make close-up shots with background blur in the background and it's very nice, very soft blur without any harshness that I can see and it really adds to an image, to a close-up image and again it's another dimension to this lens. So this lens isn't just a wide lens, this is a wide lens that can do just that little bit more and that's really nice to see. Another thing that one often sees with very wide lenses is distortion and that is where straight lines become bowed. So you, you notice this the closer you go. Well now, try as I might, I couldn't get any distortion at all from this lens. Is it a rectilinear lens? I'm really not sure, but I couldn't make it distort any straight lines at all. None of the lines were bowed. All of them appeared exactly straight and that is a real achievement for a wide lens and that turns this lens from a fun lens into a lens that you can use for serious architecture and landscape photography. So that's a very very nice thing uh, indeed to see. Most wide lenses are just fun lenses and they'll distort a bit and you can play around with them uh, and that's fine. This one doesn't have any so that's a real achievement. So in summary then this is a really nice lens that I really enjoyed using. It's a very capable wide angle with minimal to no distortion that I could see. It's got great sharpness from wide open and you really don't need to stop it down at all. It's got very strong and punchy colour. It's great in low light because it's got that wide, that fast f2 uh, maximum aperture and it will go close uh, as close as 25 centimeters and it will make you some blur in those very close shots. So this is a lens that you can have a real load of fun with. It's also a very, very practical, very, very useful lens if you've got any architectural shots to do or any shots that need straight lines to remain straight and distortion free. A very, very nice little lens and one that I'll continue to use for some time to come. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I think that's probably about it from me for this week. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I do hope this episode has been enjoyable and that it's been of some use. Many, many thanks to subscribers. I really appreciate your continued support. Thank you very, very much for that. And if you've enjoyed this episode, why not chuck us a sub? That would be appreciated and it would help the channel to grow. Many, many thanks also to patrons for your continued support. 
I really, really appreciate that support. So many, many thanks for that. As for me, I think that is it for this time. So if you're not doing anything too irksome, bothersome or irritating next week is around the same time. Please do join me for a spot more xenography. Thanks for watching. Cheerio all.